sometimes when the world's not on your side. Right? These emotions that we have. But on teaches us to navigate them in a healthy way. We'll talk about that. What was the first word just to see how bad the attention span is out here? Oh, what was the second one? Chosen. The third word is an bus. But ba tha tha. This is the one that a lot of people have, by the way, in the, in the contemporary sense. And bath uh, is a kind of sadness that is deeply penetrated. It's inside a person, and it starts impacting everything that they do, and they don't, they're not able to verbalize it. They're not able to actually say what it is. So they have this deeply felt sadness inside them, it lingers, and it's always there. So even when the moment comes to smile, the face goes halfway up and comes back down. Right? They're not able to maintain happiness for too long. There are moments like the sky is mostly cloudy, sometimes it's sunny. Like that. You know, there are people like that. They're just always they're moping around, they're, you know, they're looking looking down all the time. And you're like, why are you in that state? It's the closest thing in the Arabic language to the, I guess, you know, perpetual depression. People that are in a state of depression. That's called bath. But now because depression is such a huge problem in the world today. And the Muslim Ummah is no, is no exception. It's a huge problem in the world. This study becomes actually critical for Muslims. Studying how is Baf alleviated in the Quran? What did Allah teach us? How do, we, how do we deal with this form of sadness? So there's sadness from a traumatic incident. There's sadness of, oh, the future looks bleak. There's the sadness that's deep inside and you're not able to get it out. It's like the sickness or this sinus or this like allergy that you just can't get rid of. It's always there. You're always negative. That's Baf. And by the way, if you're like, if you're feeling you're the only one who has this, as a matter of fact, this the, the word baf occurs in the Quran in one of the du'as that a prophet of Allah experienced continuous baf and huzn. Innama ashku bathi wa huzni in Allah. I complain about my baf. I'm not translating now. I'm complaining about Allah. Say, he says this prophet says, I'm complaining about my baf and my huzn. To Allah. To Allah. What does the Zara teach us? You can even complain to Allah. Just what that ayah teaches us, I don't complain to anybody else. I talk about my suffering and my pain, you know, and what does the complaining mean? Complaining doesn't mean, Ya Allah, come on. I'm so depressed. Help me out here. No, no, no. You know when you go to the doctor and complain? You don't slap the doctor and say, hey bro. Why am I? You don't talk about it. Why'd you, why'd you make me have allergy? You go and complain to the doctor because the complaint is actually a form of you getting his sympathy and his healing, his, his prescription. Just like a child complains to the mother when they're sick. You know? Real complaint or fake complaint. You know, my, my kids, the, this flu going around all over the country. Like three of my kids had the flu the last month. You know, so two, three girls go to school in the morning, two of them are sick. One of them has someone gets out, oh, my stomach hurts, oh, my stomach hurts. The other one's just fine a second ago and she goes, mm, actually, I'm going to join the Ummah. <laughs> my stomach hurts? <laughs> Not a good actor. <laughs> so you have to, I, did I train her? I was like, you have to hold your stomach, you have to crunch a little bit. You, should have been, you shouldn't have made eye contact, because now you're checking for validation, it's not genuine. If you're going to act, then, you know, come on, just like put a little work into this. And it could have been a lot better. You could have sold this to your mother so much better. You know? You know, I don't tell her that in front of her mother, but on the side, look, you need to work on your, you know, my stomach hurts. You have to, it ought to be a little more genuine. But the idea is, when a child is complaining to the mother, my stomach hurts, the child is not saying, you caused my stomach ache. The child is saying, who else am I going to whine to? And when do you whine? You whine when you're with the beloved. You don't whine in front of anybody else. You whine in front of the beloved. In fact, the people that you have a stiff relationship with, when they come and ask you, how's it going? You say, Alhamdulillah, I'm good. It's okay. No, no, I'm okay. I'm okay. Why? Because they're not close to you. But when you go home to your mother, you know, they say even, They say that in Arabic. They say a man in the house of his mom turns into a baby. Big guy. Goes, goes to visit his mother, goes inside the house and meet Pet Mandardo. Turn into somebody else. You're gonna turn into mush. Doesn't matter if you're 40 years old. When you're with your mom, it just comes out. That's what the ayah is teaching us actually. That the prophetic prayer is when that kind of sadness, you you just don't feel like anybody will understand. Nobody will hear what you have to say. Nobody can relate to what your problem is. 
And at that, the only one you go, you know, the one you can turn to that understands you totally, that's إِنَّمَا أَشْكُوا بَكْتِي وَحُزْنِي إِلَى اللَّهِ That's for the person who feels like I have nobody to talk to. That that dua was given. Such a beautiful gift in the Qur'an. So we've got three words so far, غَمْ حُزْن and بَثْ. Then there's the word wayd. Wayd. And wayd is used to express when someone feels like they're cursed. Like they just have bad luck. And this is used for oneself and others also. When you curse somebody in Arabic, don't do it, but I'm saying, when a person curses someone in Arabic and wishes the worst upon them, they say, Waylak. Waylak. Okay? And Wayli is also, Ya Wayli, is also used. Ya Wayli means, or Ya Waylata. Ya Waylata and Waylati. There's several variations of it. Those variations mean, I feel like I am damned, I'm cursed. That everything I do turns to poison. Nothing I do works out. You don't have any confidence left in anything coming, you know, break, bearing its truths. You don't feel like anything you do will change the situation. You become hopeless. And you're utterly hopeless, and at that point you feel like there is no good fortune coming my way. There is no help. There's no help having good fortune. It's not coming my way, and that's when you feel way. Way is also used for shock, but it's also used for that kind of sentiment. That I'm suffering from weight, I'm cursed, I'm damned. And this is one of the worst words of the Arabic language. It's actually one of the words describing a place in hellfire. Which is interesting, right? Because Allah is describing hellfire with something that's also used to describe psychological torture. Right? He's describing hellfire with a word that's actually not physically painful, but it's actually you know, emotionally painful. And that's, it makes you understand when you're sitting in a psychology class and Psych 101, your professor says, you know, sometimes psychological pain is more painful than physical pain. You know, and you're like, really? I don't know. I'd rather feel sad than get my arm chopped off. You have an experience, possibly wail, and thank Allah for it. Then you understand the old, you know, age old saying that I was referring to, Rubba Qawli Nashadlub and Salud. So weight is a very deep level of sadness, and it's uh, when, when a person feels like they're cursed and there's no good coming in their way. The, a modern manifestation of that that I've personally seen through emails that I just simply can't answer because emails are not a way to give people psychological advice. It's dangerous, actually. You don't even know who's messing with you on the other side of that screen. But um, one of the common manifestations of this, I feel, is I made a mistake in my life and I feel like Allah has cursed me and nothing good ever happens. I lost my job, this happened, that happened, that happened. And I, I really think that Allah doesn't like me anymore. And I'm not, not only will I have a miserable life, I'm just going to probably burn in hell anyway, etc., etc. This person just de develops this, like, I am cursed mentality. Even if they don't say the word cursed, everything they say sounds like they are convinced that they are somehow cursed, you know? And that's a very, very powerful uh, and very dangerous state, state for uh, us to be and may Allah protect us from it. Then there's Asaf. There's Asaf. You know, in the Arabic when you say, I'm sorry, you say, I'm Asaf. Oh, I'm Asaf Jinta. Actually, some argue that the root origin of this word is not even Arabic, it's actually Hebrew. Uh, and it's one of the derivatives from which we get the name Yusuf, alayhi salam, which is close to Yusuf, which means he was given sadness. Because his, if you study the story of Yusuf it has very sad turns one after the other. A child separated from a parent, an innocent man imprisoned. You know, there are several occasions of very, very sad instances in his life. You know, and so and, and so he's he's this his uh, name itself they say is derived from that word. But let's talk a little bit about asaf. This actually means uh, a kind of sadness that eventually turns into other negative emotions. That's what I meant by the Arabs were really in touch with their feelings. Huh? They didn't just have a word for sadness, they kind of categorized it, right? So this word asaf actually means when sadness, that emotion of sadness, turns into something else. Like for example, you're upset about something, you're, you're, you're upset about maybe you got a bad grade, right? You took an exam, midterm, you crammed as much as you could, but you were half asleep and you were taking the test, you got a 40 on your test, and then you come out and you're extra mean and snappy with your friend. Then you're experiencing asaf because the sadness from one thing is translating into anger in other things. And this word is actually a pretty good indication of how we, we, we you know, substitute or project our... Are you giving me a license to Okay. You're trying to help me out here? Okay. Because somebody's in here and they're trying to get out. I'm going to keep on kicking the bin, but I don't know how much longer I can keep the president of the others MSA in here. Okay. So, so anyhow. What was I saying? Something about happiness? What was it? 
about failing in the No, the session was about other uh, And then you take the anger from one thing and you What was the word? Asaf. 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 Very good. Very good. Asaf. Asaf is the sadness where you displace your emotions into something else. Usually anger. Usually it comes out in the form of anger. So I'm on the phone and I'm driving home hands free. And I'm on the phone, I'm driving home, and somebody calls and says, you know the contract we agreed to, and the payment you said, you spent, uh, uh, we accepted the payment, but we're not sending you the goods. And I'm upset. I'm upset. And when I get home, you know, first kid that runs and tackles me, I say, where's your homework? <laughs> I just displaced my upset from outside, from the car, to the home. This is a form, this is asaf. Asaf. And actually, interestingly enough, this is the word used when Musa السلام, came down from speaking to Allah and his people were worshipping the cow, the calf. And he spoke with who? Who did he have a yelling at? Harun السلام. Allah says when he came, he came غضبانا. He came angry, Asafan. Asafan. Which means he was going to take that anger and what? Displace it. And what do you find in the story? He grabs his brother's head. He grabs it, 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 it turned that, that, ang that anger or that, that sadness actually got displaced to something else. And that's a phenomenon Quran deals with. Then of course, the Just reach into your heart and